What's up guys, M. Jones back in the house again for a Blu-ray update, a May 4th Blu-ray update, a May the 4th Be With You Blu-ray update. I've never seen Star Wars before, I know that's a crime, don't really care. I'm going to probably watch them all soon, eventually on Blu-ray with my buddy Jim Bob. But yes, I've never seen them, I know it's a crime, but I'm not huge on science fiction, that's probably why. Anyway, I know, I always say this, it's been so long since I've done any movie reviews. Uh, just finally had a chance to get all my Blu-rays all together that I've purchased in probably the last three, four months. I have them all together. I'm probably going to break them up in a few videos because there's so many. And I want to probably save some just so I can do a bunch of uh, reviews. Um, going to go over uh, mostly Blu-rays today. I found a couple awesome DVD gems that I used to watch when I was a kid. Now remember, I was born in the 80s, so I kind of grew up in the 90s. So imagine those movies that I used to watch back then. So I found a few of those on Amazon real cheap and had to purchase them, of course. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is cover my Blu-rays first. And again, I have a lot to cover. I probably will get so probably about... I'd say about 60% of them today, and then probably put up another video in the very near future. Okay, let's get started right away. Alphabetical as always. First one I picked up, I picked up actually from a coworker of mine who kind of has the same sense of humor that I do, and she said that she uh, thought I'd really like this movie, and I love anything Seth MacFarlane. I think he's absolutely hysterical, and he basically does every kind of bit or kind of comedy spoof on on people that we all think about and we all kind of wish people would be exposed of. And he does it. You know, he, he reminds me of the South Park guys, um, kind of like Trey Parker and Matt Stone, how they just slam everybody. And it's funny. Um, so I got Many Ways to Die in the West. I actually thought it was uh, a semi-decent movie. Um, there was a lot of parts that I really laughed in. You know, I thought Sarah Silverman and Giovanni Ribisi were absolutely the funniest in the movie. Um... Of course, I thought Seth MacFarlane was great. Uh, it was kind of weird to see Liam Neeson as a bad guy. As you can see, the picture kind of portrays that. I didn't really care for him as a bad guy. I didn't think it was believable. You know, every time I see Liam Neeson, I just think, take him. I think he has to save somebody, mainly probably a daughter. So it's hard for me to go away from him being the hero to uh, Total Zero. So I really like this movie, mainly for Sarah Silverman and uh, Giovanni Ribisi and their relationship in this movie. I thought that was genius. And so funny. But I say this movie's probably a solid C. I would say maybe a C minus. But other than that, not bad. The next movie I got, and I always thought I had this movie. I just forgot that, you know, I never did check it off my inventory. Um, but I really love this movie. I really love Jack Nicholson. And this movie is uh, kind of a, I would say a dark comedy. And mostly, probably would say drama, but very dark comedy. And it's about Schmidt. And this guy, he just retires, you know, Jack Nicholson's character just retires. He has, you know, a wife that's kind of a by-the-book Betty and doesn't really let him live too much. And he always has to follow along with all of her crazy, you know, crazy things she has to do around the house and crazy things they have to go do in the community. Well, eventually, I'm not ruining the movie, but she dies in the very beginning. And he's just like... Well, now what do I do? Because I've been told basically what to do most of my life. And, you know, and all this time she, she drove me crazy about, he actually starts to miss. And he kind of has an estranged daughter. And she's getting married. And, she, you know, she she kind of says, like, yeah, I'm getting married. And he's like, well, I'll just, you know, come see you. I mean, go and get in uh, Winnebago and I'll come see you. And she was kind of hesitant. So it kind of told me that she wasn't, you know, really close with him. Or he kind of kept his distance from her as she was growing up. But the movie is kind of a coming of tale about... A guy reconnecting with his family, and, um, you know, after his wife dies. And I will say, um, just like in the movie Larry Crown, when Tom Hanks does that awesome speech about when he traveled the world at the very end, there's an awesome speech in this movie, too. And it's when Jack Nicholson um, uh, is at towards the end, when he is at her, her wedding. And I must tell you, I... The, the speech is just, it's just amazing. You see a softer side of Jack Nicholson, kind of like in the bucket list when that little girl of his, his granddaughter, hugs him. It's nice to see a crazy lunatic guy slash actor show a soft side. It was pretty cool to see that. And I really liked him in this movie. Um, definitely dark, definitely different, but um, very effective. I give this movie a solid A-. minus. Loved it a lot. The next one, I th I had to get just because uh, Jim Bob was telling me a lot about it. Um, he and his uh, fiance went and saw it. And, uh, you know, I, I really wanted to see this just because I like anything that Disney or Pixar does. And, again, I, I collect any Disney 
um, you know, Diamond Edition or any any kind of Pixar really, just because I want my kids to be able to watch it someday, and I want to have them all prepared so they can, you know, at least just have the movies. So I got Big Hero Six, and I've watched it twice now, and I have to say I think it's absolutely hysterical. You know, it, it's just one of those movies that. It, it just makes you it makes you laugh the entire time, and I think it was more of the Japanese makers. Like I think a lot, of, I think this is more of like an Asian type creation, and you know the Big Hero Six guy, he's so funny in this movie. And there, there's a few things that are very, in my mind, that work both for adults and kids. It's silly for the kids, but it's, it's very humorous and witty for the adults. Uh, and there's a scene I I think everyone has seen pretty much in previews, if not. Um, you know, spoiler alert, there's a time where his, his, the air in his whole body kind of deflates and he kind of looks like he can't walk up the steps when he gets home, so he looks like he's kind of drunk. So it's kind of, you know, kind of funny for the kids to watch it thinking, you know, he's out of air, but really it looks like he's drunk and he's trying to walk up steps. So I thought that was really funny. And I have to say, it was a very good movie. Um, you know, not that long of a movie. It's probably like an hour and 30, hour 40 minutes. Um, but definitely, I, I mean, it won Best Picture for animated uh, for Best Animation. I give this movie a solid A. Not an A+, plus, but solid A. It was an excellent movie. Would we'll watch it again. Uh, just got this movie over the weekend with my fiance, and um, she wanted to see this, as did I. More so her, and you'll probably know why in a second. Um, I wanted to see this because I, I actually do like Jennifer Lopez in movies. I, I never really had a problem with her. Um, you know, she's always been a very attractive woman. And I, I kind of wanted to see this because it gave me the kind of the feeling of like the movie Fear, like Mark Wahlberg um, in the movie Fear. And I had to see this. It's The Boy Next Door. Um, it, it gave me that, mo that, 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 that fear-esque you know, a crazy guy who comes off as really cool in the beginning but shows his true colors as the movie goes on. It did remind me of Fear a little bit. I mean, just a very little bit. Um, but this, this woman, um, she she's recently separated, not divorced, but separated from her husband. And her husband's played by John Corbett, who uh, was in, um, I think, Sex in the City, and also uh, was in the, that movie, um, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Um, he's actually kind of a you know a dick in this movie, or kind of a douchebag. Um, and he cheats on her, and so they separate, and they have a young child who's in about ninth or tenth grade in school, and uh, and he's he kind of he kind of loves his dad in the beginning and starts missing him, and and then he starts to realize some things about who his dad is because of this guy right here, and this guy in the movie was Noah, um, played by a guy named Adam, uh, excuse me, Ryan Guzman who um, is like an actor and a dancer and an MMA fighter. I mean, he does pretty much everything. He's the Renaissance man. And he's a good-looking cat, so he kind of has it all. Um, you know, and, and this guy, he moves next door to her, um, where she stays with her, with her son, and he becomes buddies with her son, kind of shows him the ropes about boxing, and kind of manipulates him to make him realize that his dad's kind of a dick. And, and, and he starts to, like come on to her a little bit like you know he seems very gentle and, and normal in the beginning but things start to really turn and you see a major dark side I don't want to ruin it for you but this movie was cheesy it was kind of ridiculous but it was fun like it's a movie where you get some popcorn you got yourself a large big gulp and you just have a good time um, don't take this movie serious just enjoy it um, you know if, if anything it, it's a movie that is just fun to watch definitely um, definitely a movie. I don't know if you want to like go on and watch it with a date because it kind of makes guys look terrible if you're trying to you know impress a girl. But I would definitely say I would watch it just because it was actually a lot of fun to watch. I give this movie probably a solid C plus. All right, I'll give it that. I'm probably doing that a favor. The next movie I was so excited about, and I actually have two movies that I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about. The first one, the first movie I want to talk about. Um, of the same actor I was saying. Um, I got a Ryan Reynolds movie. I actually have two of them I'm going to talk about today. And the first one is The Captive. I found this one at Best Buy for really cheap, like $10, and it was a new release. And I'm like, it's got Rosaria Dawson in it, and it's got that Scott Speedman guy who I think was in The Strangers. And, and I'm thinking to myself, it's, it's got to be good. And it has that girl that Marielle Enos... You know, she's the girl that was in World War Z as the, um, the uh, wife to Brad Pitt. And I was, I think she's very attractive. Um, I thought it had to be good. I mean, Ryan Reynolds is good in anything he does. I, I've, I, have, I have never disliked a Ryan Reynolds movie. So I thought this would be great. I absolutely kind of hated this movie. I didn't think it was very good. You know, it, it's about, you know, his daughter's a figure skater. 
And he and his wife are having a great life, and it seemed like Alaska kind of a place, like somewhere in Alaska, I would say. Um, and and they stop to get food, and he, he leaves her in the back of his truck to just get, just get like a pizza pie real quick, and he comes out and she's gone. And he freaks out. And they just show years and years have gone by, and actually the kidnappers kind of like, you know, make this girl that they kidnapped of his daughter, make her like watch like her family and like watch him through secret cameras and stuff like that it was just really strange and the climax of it was really we really weak and i just thought it could have been a lot better um i really did not like this movie um i have to say i i give this movie an f i i, I thought it was terrible i really did i i thought it failed on everything um if you've seen it let me know down in the comments and what you thought I just, I guess my hopes were so high because I like everything Ryan Reynolds does, but I thought this movie really just dropped really quick, right when the climax came. But if you've seen it, let me know. Did not like it. Next one I want to talk about is The Fault in Our Stars. You know, I really, I really did think this movie was good. Um, I, I absolutely knew nothing about the guy in the movie. I knew Shailene Woodley just because I knew she does the Divergent and Insurgent movie, and I really thought she was amazing in The Descendants with George Clooney, put her on the map. And the guy that's in it, his name's Ansel Elgort. I, I never, even, I never even heard of him. I knew nothing about him, but I think he has somewhat of a chance to really, uh, you know, kind of go big in the world of acting. Um, he's kind of new. He's got a lot to work on, but I think he could be good because he he was very enthusiastic in this movie, or at least his character was. And it's about cancer. The movie's about cancer and what kids go through with cancer and how they go to. You know, kind of like a, uh, you know, like a big like talk group and a help group, and and how they handle with cancer and what they experience. So I don't want to ruin anything for you. I really like this. I give this movie a solid B plus. I really think you should probably watch this, um, it's just because you you can kind of feel a little bit more empathy and sympathy for people who have cancer at a young age. You know, under the age of like eighteen. Um, so it was kind of a good movie for me to watch. You know, my fiance really liked it and. Uh, I, we kind of thought that it was definitely a good movie for kids who don't have a clue about cancer and what kids of their age go through with it. So check it out. It's very good. The next one, I had to get this. You know, as as you know, I do coach high school wrestling, um, and you know, wrestling is a big part of my life now. It wasn't so much as a kid, but it is so much now. And um, I, I had to see this just because uh, I mean, because Steve Carell is supposed to be like possibly the best, you know, the best actor winner this year. Unfortunately, he did not win. It was Eddie Redmayne, who was amazing in Theory of Everything. But um, he was he was nominated for Best Actor um, as John DuPont, the the, uh, the owner of that Foxcatcher Farms, who had all the Olympic athletes come and, you know, train at his facility. And he had a very crazy interest in um, Channing Tatum's character, Mark Schultz, who was a national champion wrestler, two-time national champion wrestler, and his brother, Dave Schultz, Mark Ru played by Mark Ruffalo. And Everyone did a great job. All three of these guys did a fabulous job. You know, I know you've probably seen it. I think everyone and their mother has seen this movie and have heard enough about it. I'm not going to bore you with it. Um, I actually give it a solid A-, minus, and, and I give it in the A factor because the acting was so good, but I give it a minus just because I thought it was a little long and a little too slow at times. And a few times I'm like, <sighs> like checking my watch. Maybe grab my phone, look real quick, like, what's going on, what's going on on Twitter. But I just got a little bored a few times, but I love the acting so much, it still holds in the A's. But I give it a solid A-. minus. Check it out, it's very good acting. Uh, the next one I got, I mainly got this from my dad, uh, was Get On Up. You know, it's a story about James Brown, um, from when, from it pretty much at birth all the way to his uh, fame, and then all of a sudden whenever he got arrested later in his life, when he went on cocaine binges and alcohol and he was nuts. Um, Chadwick Boseman, again, plays another very um, famous African-American from back in the 1900s, you know, dealing with, you know, he played, you know, Jackie Robinson in 42, and he, and he also played here James Brown in Get On Up. Um, I thought the movie was a little choppy, it was a little messy a few times, um, I thought there was just a little too much emphasis on certain things and not enough on other things. Uh, again, if you haven't seen it, I don't want to ruin it for you, so I'm not going to go into that. Uh, I, I just thought the movie was a little choppy. Um, I think it was a little hurried um, upon making it, and uh, I, I didn't feel like I learned a ton about him, even though I really know his music, so it, for me it was easy. But for most people I've never really heard of him, this movie's going to be really confusing um, because so much goes on, and, you know, and James Brown's accent was so different, and Chadwick Boseman nailed it 
for, so I give I give that for, uh, you know a huge grade, but I just was just a little um, I was just a little uh, like tired of it because I really had no idea what Chadwick Boseman's character was or uh, James Brown character was saying a lot because I just couldn't pick up on his, his crazy Southern um, long draw accent. But uh, besides that, the movie's not bad. Give it a solid B minus. Chadwick Boseman did an excellent job as James Brown, but I I, I was kind of kind of bored with it. Next one I got was Gravity. You know, th this movie won so many things um, in last year's Oscars. Not this past year's, but last year's. It won so much for editing and special effects and just sound and, you know, anything like that that wasn't acting, it won. And I must say, like, this movie, I wish I would have saw in, like, an IMAX or something because it really captured the spirit of the whole thing. And... I uh, I really did I, I did like this. I it was just a little boring. Like I was just like, oh, like she's all alone. Like it reminded me of like Castaway, but in space. But Castaway, I really loved this movie. I liked. I liked. I give this movie a solid B. I mean, the editing and the sound and just cinematography was incredible. But the acting was subpar. Um, but I, you know, I really thought Sandra Bullock did a great job. Um, and, uh, you know, George Clooney wasn't in it very long, but, you know, I, I was a little bored, and the movie is pretty long, you know, I, I remember, I think it was like, kind of like an hour and 30, hour and 40 minutes, but it felt longer than that, just because it was just like one person, so the movie, I was just like, oh, alright, but uh, I give this movie a solid B, not bad. Next one I got was The Interview, and I have to say this movie is absolutely hysterical. Uh, you know, it went directly pretty much to Blu-ray, and it went, or it went directly to like Netflix or right to On Demand because, you know, the actual Kim Jong-un got pissed that they made this movie and almost threatened, like, nuclear <laughs> warfare. It's like, what, what are you doing? And anyway, and, and, and that's what, and that's what, like, what he did. It's just like, okay. So they had, they couldn't really, they didn't really, uh, put this out there too much for any, for any, uh, movie theaters. I think they did a few, but, like, not, like, world, like, nationwide, like, they're going to. Um, so I had to jump on this right away, and my, my fiance and I, we still quote this movie I, I thought it was so funny and um you know i must say i give this movie a solid i'll say b plus it, it was it was a little ridiculous a little far-fetched obviously but it was a lot of fun to watch and i did laugh really hard the acting was okay you know i james franco was hysterical in this movie seth rogan he I, you can leave your liver die with him his annoying laugh but but james franco uh, he was outstanding and uh i, I really enjoyed this i would watch it over and over Next one I got was The Judge. I wasn't so crazy about this movie. A lot of people said, oh, it's so good. And and, and I was like, okay, I'll check it out. Wait, so my expectations were still kind of at bay. You know, they, they were probably low to mid-range, so I wasn't going too crazy. And I'm not a huge Robert Downey Jr. fan, nor am I a huge uh, Billy, Bob, um, Billy Bob Thornton fan. Um, so I was kind of like, eh. Well, we'll see how it goes. And honestly, wasn't impressed. Uh, I saw Robert Duvall was nominated for like Best Supporting Actor or Best Actor, and I didn't really see why. I thought it was okay. I mean, I, I think Robert Duvall is a phenomenal actor. I just think that was better than him. You know, I think he just kind of, kind of came up a little short. And you know, it's about a guy basically who's a big city lawyer, and he comes back home to basically be on the defense of his father, who is accused of something. And he's a judge of this town, but he's accused of something. So he kind of comes back as his lawyer. And I just thought it just failed a lot of places. I thought the acting and the script tried to be too witty than it was. And I just, I didn't care at all. I, I gave this movie a solid C. I, I, I had no interest really about halfway through it. And uh, I'm not a big Robert Downey Jr. fan because I think he plays the same character in every movie. Maybe except for Tropic Thunder. So I just, I was just like, whatever, you know, it was all right, but not a movie I'd want to watch again, but part of the collection. So there it is. Uh, the next one I had to get was Let's Be Cops. I, I, I remember seeing this movie um, previewed in the theater, and, and I just thought this looked so funny. And if you've watched any videos of mine in the past, I talk about my top 10 favorite funny actors, and Jake Johnson is, is in that top 10. I think he's number eight or seven. Well, he's, I think he's great in this movie as well. And these guys are kind of like losers. They don't really have anything going. So they just happen, happen to get cop uniforms for some Halloween thing. And they're, and they're walking to this party and they're going through the city and someone thinks they're actual cops. 
and they do something to, like, save someone, and they think it's like, wow, this is legit, this is fun. But they're not really cops. And they go around town pretending to be cops, and Jake Johnson's character ends up buying a cop car from eBay. And it, it was just, it, I thought it was hysterical. Like, it was a lot of fun. Um, not a great movie as in, like, oh, wow, this would be nominated for the Oscars, but... But if there was a you know comedic Oscars, this would probably be in there somewhere. Like I thought it was so funny. I give this movie a solid B plus. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, Damon Wayans Jr. slowly growing on me. You know I still think of his dad so much as being so funny, and I just think he kind of just copies what his dad did. I don't think he's very original. So I'm still waiting for him to kind of break out in his own thing. But I love Jake Johnson. I thought he was really good. Not bad movie. Had to get this movie. My God, it's my childhood. You know, this is like the first time I ever saw like little kids kiss or something like that. When I was like a little boy, I'm like, oh my God, what are they doing? And that's my girl. You know, I, I this is probably the first time I ever like cried in a movie, and probably the first time I ever saw like a boy and a girl like kiss. And I thought I was like, whoa. So I had to get this movie for nostalgia purposes. You know, I know you can probably get it like on on demand or Netflix at any time, but I really wanted the actual tangible item. I really wanted to keep this mainly because I have a massive collection I want to add to, and I just had to have this uh, movie to watch at my disposal. You know, but everyone knows what this movie's about. You know, it, it, they're two friends, and he's very allergic to bees and all that kind of stuff, among other things. And she takes this summer class with this this older teacher that she has a big crush on, and he's just always kind of being the cool guy and being and just kind of being this, being her friend. And you know, eventually she wants to learn what it's like to kiss somebody, and so they you know they kiss, and and all this stuff happens. It's a very beautiful movie, and you know I thought Dan Aykroyd and Jamie Lee Curtis were great in this movie too. And uh, you know it's a movie you just got to see. I mean I don't think I need to say too much, just because I think everyone I think everybody's seen this movie. Um, but yeah, this this movie I can remember as a little kid. You know, if if you don't know what happened in the movie, I'm not going to tell you. But there's a really sad part at the end, and I remember after I saw this movie with my mom and my older brother, I remember I was crying like the whole time after the movie. I remember I walked out crying, holding my mom's hand, and I remember we had to stop at like some supermarket like right after the movie, and I was still crying. And my mom's like, "I'm never taking you to a movie again because you're being ridiculous." I'm like, "Mom, I'm five. Like I just saw I just saw a horrible thing happen, which I'm not going to ruin for you. I saw a horrible thing happen. Be a little more sim like sympathetic." And she was just like, well, you, you know, it, it's just a movie. I'm like, well, it's, it sucked. So it really bothered me, like, what happened at the end of this movie. I'm good now. But when I was five, I was a mess. So check this out. Great movie. My Girl, solid A. It, it's, a it's almost a perfect movie. Okay. Next one. Nightcrawler. Probably, I would say, probably my second favorite movie all year. Um, this past this past season for the Oscars and all that. You know, Jake Gyllenhaal, he lost, like, 20 pounds from his already thin frame. He lost like 20 pounds for this movie to be a nightcrawler, who are basically people who go out at nighttime to get like uh, footage of like crashes or robberies or drug deals or anything that's kind of like on the edge of great news um, that people really want to see at 11 o'clock or 6 o'clock. And he, he kind of starts, you know, from the bottom. You know, he's kind of like Drake, starts from the bottom, now he's here kind of a thing. So, uh, a little Drake reference. So, I really thought that like it was a great movie and he played just like this, this this creep. He was just not a great guy. And he kind of just sees what life is all about and, and, and you know, through a lens. And, and the person that buys the, the, his, his, uh, his clips off him is uh, played by Rene Russo, who I always loved in the 90s. And I was kind of sad I haven't seen her in many things. But she, she looked good, too, um, for her age. And uh, you know, it's just a great movie. I would definitely say check this out. It's totally, it's a very different kind of movie. And uh, definitely one, probably my second favorite movie all year. I'll get to my favorite movie all year, and that's later in the list. But this is definitely one of my favorite ones of the year. Definitely a second favorite. Give this movie a solid A. It was very good. Um, got this movie mainly because it reminds me of a few of my mentors uh, in my life. Um, when it deals with like my work or any any kind of thing in life, you know, it just reminds me of an older human being giving younger. Um, a younger person um, advice, you know, life advice, and it's on Golden Pond. You know, it's with it's with the late Henry Fonda, and, and Catherine Hepburn, and of course I think Jane Fonda too. Yeah, Jane Fonda's in this. Uh, I think who I believe is Henry Fonda's daughter, and, and a little boy, and it's I mean, he's kind of like an old curmudgeon, and, and this young boy's kind of a snot nosed punk, but he's like a good kid, but he's kind of punky like, and they both hang out a lot, and they both kind of just find peace. 
um, with life because of each other. So it's kind of a great movie to watch. It's kind of like the Tuesdays with Maury kind of a thing. Um, it's a movie where you kind of learn a lot about an older person and you learn a lot about a younger person. Um, but I really love this movie and, you know, it's a great movie to watch with anybody. But it's definitely a good movie to watch, I think, with a grandfather or, or, or your father or anyone that's of, of senior citizen age um, that can really kind of say, hey, you know, I, I would say that too and I would say that to you. And it's just a great movie. I really, really liked it. Uh, the next movie I had I had to get was uh, one of my favorite movies from like early on in high school that I thought was so funny was The Replacements. And I have to say, John Favreau played um, played uh, Danny Bateman, this crazy lunatic linebacker that tackled just about everything. And he kind of reminded me of like the Water Boy whenever the Water Boy would freak out Adam Sandler. Um, but I just love this movie and Keanu Reeves. He's just you get what you get from him, and it like, and it's cool. Like, it just works. And he's just like, hey, it's all right. What's going on? Like, I just, I just like him. He's just a cool. He's a very likable character. And then Gene Hackman, who I think is so amazing as an actor, and you know, I love everything about Gene Hackman. I think he's a great actor. He, you know, these are these are guys that are playing in the uh, in the football pro league. And they go on strike. So they have these replacements come in, mainly Keanu Reeves' character, Shane Falco, who used to be an old college football player. And, you know, they're horrible in the beginning, and then they all come together, and somehow they're beating other teams. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but it's just a fun movie. It's definitely a great comedy and a great sports movie, and I think a very underrated movie myself. Um, Give yeah, this movie a solid B. It, it's fun. It's nothing too crazy. And I forgot to say, I think I gave on Golden Pond. I gave that an A. That was a phenomenal movie. Uh, the next one I got was uh, This Means War. And, you know, I actually really thought this was a good movie. I, I think it got a lot of a lot of crap for, for being so far-fetched in how the movie was portrayed. Um, and some of the scenes where these two guys are kind of like investigator cop kind of things. And there's so many times where they probably should have been killed and they weren't. Um, I don't think you have to look at it like that. You look at it as kind of a, a like a romantic like action movie where both of these guys are trying to date her, who is obviously Reese Witherspoon, and they meet kind of separately and they don't realize that they are buddies and she doesn't realize she's seeing him and she's kind of seeing him and you know they don't know this because they're friends. And it's just... It's kind of like this means war, as in like, hey, buddy, it's war. I'm gonna get her, you know, from you. So it's just kind of like that. And I, I thought it was a fun movie. It, it, it's cheesy, but it's fun. You know, I, I give it a solid, probably B minus, C plus. Um, just I did like it. it. Was fun, but it's nothing to write home about. The acting is very subpar, but it is a fun movie. Um, the next one I got was, um, uh, oh, excuse me. The next one I got was the voices. I had to, I had to get this movie. I'm not sure. I wasn't sure like what to expect with this at all, and you know, and I was telling you about Ryan Reynolds. Um, you know, I didn't like him in The Captive. I thought this movie was pretty good. Um, it has like a 72 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which is considered pretty good. So I actually thought, you know, all right, I, I got to check it out. And it's about a guy named Jerry, and he he works as like a chipper. He works in this, um, it's like a bathtub factory, and. And he, he goes on this date, and he's not sure whether to be, like, you know, like... He, he just goes through a bunch of things where he has, like, a talking... Like, an evil cat and, like, a very nice talking dog. And he, he's not sure if he should be, like, normal with this whole situation or be, like, completely crazy. And it's just a strange movie. Like, I, I can't really explain it to you. Like, I never even heard of the director, and it, it, it was just so... It was just so different. Um, it it kind of reminded me of, like, Extract a little bit. Um, with its um, kind of like office space feel or Super Troopers like feel, um, but it's, it's definitely worth watching. I, I can't even grade this. I would say it's like a maybe B minus, maybe a B, because I did like it, but it was just so strange, and it definitely made you think like this is so trippy. Like this is a really trippy movie. But you know his cat and dog, they're just they're crazy. But um, I think you might like it. Anna Kendrick's in it too, if you like her. Um, but I don't want to say too much because I could give it away, but it's just a really weird movie that he's kind of like under the spell of these animals and he just kind of isn't sure which path he wants to take, um, with, uh, you know, with life and all that other stuff. But just, if it's just a strange movie, I, I did like it. I, I, go, go watch it, check it out. Um, uh, the next one I got was The Wedding Ringer. Um, I had, I had to get this one because I like anything Kevin Hart. I think he is very funny. Um, 
I actually like him in movies a lot more than who he is in real life. In real life, he seems kind of like a douchebag, but I really do like him in movies. Um, I loved him in that movie with uh, Ice Cube. Um, I think it's called Ride Along. I thought that was really good. And I, I thought this was really good. He's kind of like um, he's kind of like a paid uh, like wedding like hero. Like he he is, he could be a best man. He could be an ordained minister. He that's his business. He just pretends and he sells it. He kills it for people who don't have like a lot of friends or or they just can't find anybody you know for their wedding and and he always does, he fills in and he, he it was actually pretty funny and and Josh Gad is marrying Kelly Cuoco, um, or you might think and. And he kind of starts to get to know who he really is throughout this whole time with Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart shows a soft side with um, to him through time, and you know it was actually a pretty good movie. I, I have to watch this again. I think I, lo I missed a lot of parts because um, so much is going on, and Kevin Hart talks so fast. It's so hard to like hear all the genius and the humor. So I think I have to watch this again. I liked it. I'd say it's a solid B minus. It's very fun and very funny. Okay, the last Blu-ray I want to talk about was, in fact, my favorite movie all year. And um, I totally agree with the Best Supporting Actor um, nomination win by J.K. Simmons. But, but Whiplash, I mean, this was just an incredible movie. You know, I, I, was, I never did, I was never into being in the band and stuff like that for, like, school and stuff. I always played sports, but I, I have a lot of respect for what they go through, especially after watching this movie. And, you know, Miles Teller, who I think is going to be a great actor, Someday he's already coming off to be a great actor, but I think he's going to be an exceptional actor someday. You know he he plays he plays a guy named Andrew who wants to be in this huge in this great music academy and be the drummer there, kind of like a jazz drummer. And you know, and J.K. Simmons is you know character. Um, I think it's played by Terrence Fletcher. I think that was his name. And he's just he's just volatile. He's just terrifying. And he just does stuff that's just like. Whoa. Holy shit, like, he, he makes fun of everybody, he calls people, like, very derogatory names, doesn't even give a shit at all, and it was just, it was just very intense, and I loved it. And fun fact about this movie, there's not a part, not even remotely one part in this movie that Andrew or Miles Teller is not in. He's in the whole movie, like, he's always on the screen. I thought that was a pretty cool trivia question, or trivia, trivial knowledge about the movie. But just an exceptional movie, I give this movie the only A+. Plus in the entire stacks today. I loved this movie. I thought it was fantastic. You have to watch it. The movie's like an hour and what, 40, oh my God, I don't even know, like an hour and 45 minutes. It feels like it's seven minutes because it's so boom, 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 boom. And it's so great. I loved everything about it. You know, I, I, I tend on watching it again and over and over. Just really loved it. So that was my Blu-ray selection. Uh, I'm going to quickly go over some DVDs. I'm not going to go over too many. Just going to go over a few that I recently have purchased and uh, watched again. Uh, I'm not going to go over all of them, but I'm going to go over a few. Save some for another video. Um, so I got a bunch, and the reason why I got the DVDs is because I can't find them anywhere for Blu-ray, and I just want them. Um, you know, this reminds me of being a kid. I had to get blank check. Such a classic movie. Uh, I'm not going to go too crazy into this. You know, you have to see if you've never seen it. If you were born in the 80s, growing up 90s, like this movie was just like, I, I wanted to be this kid so bad because he found this blank check that he could put anything on it and it was dirty money and he put like a million dollars down and he, he got his own house and this huge pool and like this awesome go-kart and like he did all this crazy stuff. Like I wanted to be this kid so bad when I was a kid. Loved this movie. Next one was Blank Check. I, or excuse me, uh, Blank Man, sorry, the last one was Blank Check. This one's Blank Man. And again, I was talking about Damon Wayans Jr., how he hasn't really found his place, I think, as his own humor, because he think he acts like his dad a lot. Well, this is his dad right here, Damon Wayans, the father. And this was an early 90s classic, and I, I thought it was so funny. It's like an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes, not very long. And he plays this crime fighter that's like, he makes up his own, like, his own, like, weapons that don't do shit, but they actually somehow are effective. And he just, he basically dressed up like this because no one really, like, gives a shit about his city. And his mother was unfortunately killed. And he and David Allen Greer are brothers, and they try to take back the city a little bit. And he's just so quirky, but the movie's so funny. And Damon Wayne screaming like a girl is the funniest thing ever. So you gotta check this out. So good. How to Get Richie Rich. I loved this movie when I was a kid. You know, Macaulay Culkin can talk about someone who's totally changed, you know, basically what you thought he'd end up. You know, he, he's he just seems like he's a little out there. But as a kid in this movie, like, the movie is so bad 
Like, the movie's so bad, it's good. Um, I really liked this as a kid. But I watched it again as an adult, and I was like, oh my god. It's just, it's not a great movie. But it's fun to watch, and I hate John Larroquette. I've never liked him in movies, and this gives me another reason not to like this movie, uh, not to like him because he was the villain. But I just think he's very dry. You know, I did like him in Stripes, but everything else I'm just not real big on. And lastly, I had to get Suburban Commando. I honestly don't have a clue what the hell I was thinking. This might be the worst movie I've ever seen. Like, it's a solid F. Like, it's an F minus. It's a G. It's a Z. I don't know if you can grade that way. This movie's so bad. And the, and the CGI is god-awful. And I don't think there was CGI before. I think it was just fig. I don't know how they did it in, in editing. But this movie's terrible. And Hawk Hogan, like, sh oh, God. What are you thinking? But it was so bad. But but anyway, I would definitely don't get this. I wish I didn't. But I had to get it because I remember watching it as a kid and thinking it was great. And no, no, as an adult, it's awful. But anyway, I, again, like I said, I have a lot more movies to cover. Didn't want to cover all today. I've already talked for thirty five minutes. You know, I I could probably go on for another half hour. I'm not going to do that because you probably unsubscribe. But um, I will have more movies in the very near future. And this time, I promise, very near future. And uh, you know, please get back to me on any kind of uh, comments you want to leave down there at the bottom about any of the movies I talked about today. If there's any movies you recommend I check out, please always let me know that. And I keep hoping you uh, enjoy watching and uh, always tell other people, please subscribe. And I'll have a lot more movies reviews for you in the future, whether they're Blu-ray or in theater reviews. Um, hopefully have get get Jim Bob back and uh, Steggs Jr. back and, and other people. Rocco, you calm down. And uh, until then, you take it easy and K-bye.